let me start off by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Suveer Bajaj. I run uh, a digital marketing agency called Foxy Moron, which is headquartered in Bombay. Uh, we have offices in Gurgaon and Bangalore as well. Uh, when I say full service digital agency, there are about six or seven things that we do and I'll talk, talk you through these uh, things during our presentation as well. Um, we look at social media marketing, we look, look, at tech, uh, we look at technology, we look at search, we look at media planning and buying. We do a lot of content production. Someone in the front spoke about uh, how video is overtaking the internet recently. We, also now start, we have also now started doing something called listening and analytics, which is basically deep diving into your website to understand performance and productivity. And most recently, we've started doing online reputation management, a combination of online public relations and offline public relations to measure the efficacy of a brand's online. Uh, over the course of today's presentation, I'm going to be taking you through three large sections and hopefully there's something interesting for each of you here uh, in these three large sections. The first section I'm going to talk you through is an introduction to what the digital industry replicates itself as from the West, the West vis-a-vis -vis India. Uh, digital is, is, a, is a big black hole. People don't really know, know how to understand what digital means, decode what digital means, understand the importance that digital has vis-a-vis -vis other mediums and other media in India. So my first section is going to throw some light on what digital actually means in India. In the second section, I'm going to talk to you about some key trends in digital that are overtaking 2016. Now, this is a very interesting section because you'd notice that a lot of these trends will either get replicated in product level functionality that you build into your website or will be actually the genesis for necessity when clients come to you saying, Maus, mujhe naya, kuch naya karna hai. and what is that naya we're here to answer today? The third section that I'm going to talk, uh, talk you through is strategies to build a good business for yourselves. So a lot of you must be running organizations, you are senior members at organizations, and we spoke about some of the key challenges in the first morning session that we have while building these businesses. So in my third section, I'm going to take you through some key uh, strategies for building a successful business, following which we'll break into a short question answer, which I'm sure by the, mo the reference of the earlier sessions, you guys will have a lot of questions to um, to jump into. So without much further, further ado, let's jump into our first section, which is an introduction to digital. So let's start off by understanding the digital ecosystem in, in India. <clears throat> India has a population of roughly about 1.3 billion people globally. We've got about 375 million active internet users as on date. Uh, we're also anticipating that this number over the next five or six years is anticipated to double to move to almost 750 million internet users. And why this becomes important for us to understand is because it shows the huge opportunity for penetration. Just to draw a comparison, does anyone know how many Indians watch television? The number 754 million Indians who watch television every month, which means that in a few years, if digital manages to get to that 750 million number, digital will actually be as important as television will be in this country. We've got about 303 million active mobile internet users. Of these, about 200 million are smartphone users. The rest of them are actually feature phone users, which is still a large market to be considered for when we build product. Let's look at the time spent with media. So the average daily use of the internet via PC or tablet is about 4 hours and 22 minutes. The average daily use on, on, a, on a mobile phone is about 3 hours and 7 minutes. If you looked at this statistic exactly one year ago, the number of uh, hours spent on a mobile device was actually under 2 hours. So it just goes to show how the trend of mobile consumption has increased dramatically with a 50% increase just from last year to this year. The average daily use of social media via devices is two hours, and the average daily television viewing time is one hour 52 minutes. Clearly illustrating how television has now taken a back seat, and what used to be the behest and the backbone for all advertising in India has now far been superseded by digital and by technology and by devices. So let's contextualize digital to large numbers, 1.3 billion people in India, Almost 130 million Indians on Facebook. Facebook is actually the second, uh, India is actually the second um, largest Facebook market in the world. And believe it or not, the United States is actually a degrowing Facebook market. The United States actually degrows on Facebook by 8% every month, which means that people are actually dropping off from Facebook in the US because it's getting oversaturated. But in India, India is a fast growth Facebook market. And believe it or not, 80% of all people who get onto Facebook are getting onto Facebook from mobile. 
We've got about 31 million LinkedIn users. I spoke about LinkedIn very briefly in the morning. And LinkedIn, from a social networking standpoint, is actually the highest from a time spent perspective. So people actually spend the most amount of time on LinkedIn in comparison to Facebook and Twitter. And the reason I'm giving you these insights is because it's important to understand what consumer psychologies are when they get onto the internet. When you build product, when you want to integrate social into product, it's important to understand how people are thinking. Twitter, on the other hand, is not as developed. Twitter uses about, Twitter constitutes about 18 million Indians on Twitter and is therefore a lot more conversational in nature. Now let's look at understanding how <coughs> advertising spends in India work. And why is this important for you guys to understand? So I was speaking to someone over lunch and they were telling me that they're making a website and they're having a hard time monetizing that website. And I'm sure that must, that must either be a problem for a lot of you or for your clients, saying, I product, but how do I monetize product? Monetize now the problem with monetizing it is that we all are sitting in this room who are making and building digital products are all fighting for a spend that comes out of this pie. And let's understand that pie. You see that number in the center of the screen, 57,000 crores, that is the overall spend on advertising in India across platforms. So we are less than 60,000 crore rupees on, on annual advertising spends across all mediums. Just to give you some context, India is a country of 1.3 billion people. Let's imagine that if I had to hold my hands up, India was this big, and India spends 57,000 crores on advertising a year. If I have to draw a comparison, Oman is this big, but Oman still spends 60,000 crore rupees a year on advertising. So just to throw some context and light on how India is a very small market as far as advertising is concerned. Now if you go back to look at uh, the, the constitution of how this money gets broken up, you notice that television of course manages to, to occupy a large chunk of this, of this 57,000 crores with roughly about half. Right? And you look at digital. Digital comes, comes stacks at about 7,300 crores, give or take. And 7,300 crores is less than 14% of the overall pie. On an average, an organization says that we are spending about 7 to 10% of our annual marketing spends on our digital products, on our digital advertising. And that just goes to show that everyone sitting in this room here today is fighting for that same billion dollars, right? That number up there is exactly one billion dollars. So the size of our industry today is a one billion dollar industry, which is a peanut sized industry. So whatever we do, we are all fighting for that same billion dollars. What is the scope of digital, right? So we're talking about products and how these products can become uh, more experiential, they can become more engaging, how they can keep users engaged with uh, for a long period of time. And therefore, we need to understand the dynamicity of what digital entails today. These products are, so let's imagine that your website used to sit at the center or the fulcrum of any digital media marketing campaign, right? People would do, someone said, someone signed the front and said, we used to do search solutions for our clients. Someone spoke about SMM over there, saying that eventually what we are doing is we are marketing our website and we are driving traffic back to this website because it becomes the one central focal point where I manage to transact, sell my product, engage with my user, uh, you know, build equity with my customer. But today I think the importance of the entire ecosystem is very important to understand when you do build product, when you do consult with your customer, Customers and your consumers in terms of what their longer term strategies should be once they build the product, when they start brainstorming through and through the entire cycle. <clears throat> So you've got social, which is obviously the most popular form of engagement on digital today. Search, you've got your website, you've got mobile advertising, display advertising, video, emailer, and ORM. We're briefly going to talk about all these solutions and how they become important to integrate them when you do consult with your customers. So I'm going to quickly start talking about some of the key latest trends in technology uh, for 2016. These trends are 2016 trends. A lot of these trends you'd notice you're already integrating into functionality of website. A lot of these trends you will want to take back home and think how you can implement them. We spoke about value addition to our clients, saying that we are not just technology shops who build product on PHP. We actually add value to our clients. And how do you add value is because you can be the most up-to-date shop in your city. You can provide the best and most logical solution that is up to date with times to your client. So I'm going to take you through some of the key trends of 2016 and hopefully you, get, you guys can take this back home, give it a think 
and understand how to utilize these trends in your businesses. <clears throat> so trend number one is move to context data. Right? The traditional method of marketing in the buying process was uh, basically awareness, interest, desire. We've all been to school and we've all seen how eventually we move down to value focused thinking. And now of course there's disruption, right? There's no real method to how companies are selling. Customer acquisition is, is happening across the board. Um, the, the marketing dollar has gotten so much more expensive with these big e-com guys coming in who are throwing money at customer acquisition and uh, uh, CACs are jumping up to six and seven dollars across e-commerce and that logically makes no sense to you, right? You sit down as a product designer saying, hey, I'm building an e-commerce website for my client who's selling LG televisions, but I can't acquire any customers, right? Because Amazon has killed the market and I can't acquire any customers. So the buying decision has now become non-linear from a customer standpoint. And while we do build web websites, uh, we do build products and mobile apps, it's very important to understand how the consumer is thinking. Because if we don't understand how the consumer is thinking, then we are not building a product that serves a solution for that consumer. We're building a product that serves a solution for our client who is a business, but if he is not generating any revenue or any ROI or any traction on that product, what is the point? <clears throat> Trend number two is empathy mapping. So YouTube released a survey last, uh, at the end of 2015, and YouTube said that if we had to put all our content into categories, naturally, Bollywood would be the largest category because most people come to consume Bollywood content. The second largest category that people come to consume content is humor. And I'm sure we've all seen the All India Bakchods of the world come and do their funny stuff on YouTube, and we've all spent many, many hours laughing at their bad language. The third thing that YouTube actually said works best for content on the internet is, is empathy, believe it or not. So it becomes important for us to take a step back from what we are trying to do to understand how our consumers are thinking and feeling, what they are looking at, basis what they look at, what they do, and basis, what they, uh, and basis the environment they're in, what are they hearing to. By doing so, we start understanding the pain point of the consumer and we start understanding the opportunities for gain for our customers. By doing this, we are also ensuring that the product that we build is actually serving as a solution to a problem that the customer is facing or the user is facing. And it's not just one additional touch point. Back in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, when most of your clients came to you, they said, boss, I have a website. Why do I make Because that's the new in thing to do. Someone said it here. My dad didn't understand digital, but the, the, the client's dad didn't understand. But the son came and said, boss, I have a website. Why? Because everyone is making a website. Bana rahe. And that is a cool thing to do. But today, it's not just another checkbox on your marketing list. Ki things to do, I have to deploy this outdoor, this standee, etc. I have to make one website. Today, you want to treat it as a solution to a business problem that a business has and therefore serve as an opportunity to a customer who can potentially interact with that business or brand. <clears throat> Trend number three, personalization is the way to go. We briefly spoke about uh, in the mornings uh, when Sridhar asked the question is where do you see the industry and your business moving forward in the next three years? Someone said, I look at, the, I look at a lot of automation coming in, 60% automation and 40% customization. But a large chunk of customization is actually very, very dependent on personalization. The benefit of the internet today is that you can personalize the experience for every different category of user that comes to your website. If you have younger users who are coming to your website from social, you can design a specific landing, landing page that talks just to these young guys. If you have more mature consumers who, who have a higher intent and discover your website from search, you can have a specific dedicated section to consumers who come there. Basis their intent, you can develop products that have spe specific call to actions that actually personalize the experience for each person who comes to the website. So someone comes in thinking that today I am going to buy a TV, I'm not coming to browse, he should have a different navigational experience on the website versus someone who says, hey, I'm just coming to look around today. I will check out five TVs here. I will check out five on Amazon and five on Flipkart. Maybe next week on Sunday when I have nothing to do, I'll come and make my purchase. So the intent is different. And if the intent is different, then as product creators, why can't we personalize the experience of how we actually serve product to people who come to this product with different intent? 
Trend number four, thumb stopping content. Where has this term thumb stopping content come from? Today, the most frequent thing that we do today is scroll up with our thumbs, right? We spoke about the importance and the relevance of um, mobile today and how most content consumption is actually happening on mobile. Now, the important for, uh, uh, what's important for us as product designers, as product developers, as product managers and product creators is that we create destinations or we create content that actually has the ability to stop someone's thumb from scrolling and get them to take a step back and notice what you're doing. As you guys noticed on the first slide, people are spending up to three, two hours of uh, content consumption on their mobile phones today. Up to four hours of content consumption on their PCs today. And a lot of that content, a lot of this content comes in front of all our faces and all our eyes. And what we're doing with this content is we're consuming it and 80% of it is going through our heads and coming out from the other side. We're not really consuming it. How often do you stop and take notice of any marketing or promotional material that's pushed at you? How often have you stopped and taken notice of an ad? How often have you stopped and taken notice of a website that you didn't expect to pop up in front of you, pop up by virtue of you getting a, uh, clicking on a backlink or an affiliate link from something that you're reading. <clears throat> Couple of examples how this works. <clears throat> GIFs are back big time and you guys, you guys would have seen a lot of GIF, GIFs being played uh, across different across different media, across different mediums. And the intention for us is, so, so GIFs are just a trend of 2016. They may be gone in the next three, four, five, six months. But the intention of putting this slide here is to understand how you can capitalize on a trend to actually get your customer to stop scrolling and take notice of what you're doing. Cinema graphs are back big time. Has anyone seen us? We'll come to the click here later. We let's not click and get distracted. Trend number five, virtual reality is going mainstream. So the reason I put this slide here is because it's very important to understand how products we build are now starting to get experiential in nature and when I mean experiential in nature you notice that the products that you build will largely fall into two categories and the two categories of products that you build will be utility products where a product serves a particular utility for the user who comes to access it the utility could actually be transactional in nature or non-transactional in nature and the second bucket of pro products that you'll end up building for your clients are entertainment related products where someone doesn't really need to come there, but they're coming there because it's entertaining for them, because they want to consume content, because they want to read articles, listicles, 10 best places to go, five top restaurants in Delhi, that all uh, uh, best Bollywood songs of 2016, best music videos of Katrina Kef, all falls into the entertainment section, where we don't need this data in our lives, but we come there because it's entertaining to us, and that is our version of doing time pass. That's what the equivalent of television is. It's us doing time pass. And the second section of products, as I spoke about, is utility products. Utility products where someone wants to buy online, where someone wants to check the prices of a uh, train ticket, where someone wants to check the terms and conditions on their insurance policy. And that serves a utility to my functional life. Now, as far as building these experiences are concerned, the question a lot of us ask ourselves is, how do I take these experiences out of that box or out of that tablet or out of that phone and make it slightly more experiential. How do I get the user to commit to me as a company, a brand, a marketeer by, by managing, to, man, managing to envelope him in a digital ecosystem and environment but in a slightly more engaging fashion. So virtual reality is a great example of how virtual reality is actually going mainstream today. I think this video will work if you click on it.
Okay. Um, someone said what's happening in the next three years in the first section, and someone said in the next three years, video content is going to overtake the internet. And that's very true today. Video content has led to become the most um, the most aggressive form of content consumption on the internet today. Whether you talk about dedicated video consumption platforms like YouTube or Vimeo, or you talk about product designers and developers like you that are now using video backgrounds on websites that are dramatically increasing the weight of the website, but also increasing the engagement equity quotients of consumers on these websites when they land there. Video consumption used prior to, uh, if you would have noticed, <coughs> Facebook today when you log on to your timeline, for every second post has a video feed there. Now prior to Facebook launching its own proprietary video, <coughs> video stream platform, which is still not fully developed, Facebook used to prioritize video as, as content type number four. Content type number one was text, Content type number two was image. Content type number three was actually an external link, believe it or not, where you would go outside the environment of Facebook. And content type four was video. Why is that? Because not only do you go outside Facebook, you're basically going onto YouTube to consume the video, but you're also going outside Facebook for up to two or three or four minutes. So the average time per session spent on consuming that video has now, and Facebook used to do about eight minutes per user per day prior to launching their own, um, their own video algorithm. Now, now, now that they have their own video product, Facebook's average time per user per day has gone up from eight minutes to believe it or not, 37 minutes just by virtue of the fact that they have now built their own video product and they're allowing users to consume this video. They're pushing this video content to them, saying, hey, consume my video content. What do they do by doing that? They increase the advertisable inventory. Because they've increased their ATS, they're now going back to brands saying, hey, we have more evolved users, we have more engaged users, you should pay us more. This is also giving content creators an opportunity to now explore these platforms to enhance their content experiences. Now, why this is important for us as product designers is because it's important for us to understand that people now want to watch video. Someone spoke about when we, when we had the long and heated debate and discussion about B B Big Rock in the morning, the point I cited is that Big Rock is actually doing something called category creation. What YouTube and Facebook have done for video is they have done category creation. They have they have tuned the mind of users to log on to the internet and expect to see great video content. So when a user, launch, when a user lands on your product, he's still expecting to see great video content because that's how his brain is working today. The, the user launch, lands on Facebook today, which is where probably most of his, his time spent outside of his email inbox is on Facebook. And he's seeing one video every two posts. He goes to YouTube for his daily dose of entertainment and he's only seeing video. So when he comes back to your product or to your website, or to your app, can you serve him video content? If yes, how can you do it in the smartest fashion to keep him engaged, to increase your client's engagement, to increase the average time per session on your website? We have another case study which we will look at uh, after we're done with the presentation. And just to, give you, uh, some, just to give you some key stats to validate how video is working, there are about 60 million people, give or take, that are accessing, uh, this is a YouTube stat, that are accessing YouTube, and this is specifically from desktops. There are about 80 million people per month on an average that are actually consuming content on YouTube in totality. And they're consuming about 3.7 billion videos. That's about 414 minutes spent by each video every month just consuming video content. This fundamentally explains the first slide where we said that the time spent watching TV has now gone down to under two hours and the time spent on digital has not now gone up to over four hours. Clear shift in change of content consumption patterns. Believe it or not, this 3.7 billion views uh, is what India generates per month with its users. Globally speaking, YouTube says that we have a category of videos. We spoke about categories earlier. YouTube has a, a category of videos called how to, right? And I'm sure everyone must have gone to YouTube at some point of time and said, how to tie a, a fancy knot for my tie, how to make spicy chicken curry. And believe it or not, YouTube has actually become the second largest search engine today after YouTube. And the how to category by itself generates 4 billion search queries every single month on YouTube, believe it or not. We got a case study which we'll come back to later. 
The following film has been rated F. All characters in this film... Oh wait, there's actually only one character in this film. All characters in this film are real and any resemblance to said characters alive, making faces or twerking is purely intentional. This is a mountain for dramatic effect. This is a mountain behind a dude on a boat. And this, this is Sarath. Hello there, Sarath. Sarath is from Chennai, where cold, winter only exist in school textbooks and full of swag. Okay, back to Sarath. Sarath's intention was to use social media to get refreshed. No, but by profession. He recently won a contest with Fosters, which is why he's here. But this story is not about him, although he's in it. This story is about the journey he's about to undertake. A journey to find the coldest place in India. Needless to say, Fosters is paying for it. Needless to say, this guy wants it. So pack your bags, Sarath. It's about to get damn cold. So, we came to Leh. Leh was once the capital of the Himalayan kingdom of Ladakh. So why are we here? Because we couldn't make it to the moon, but mostly to get refreshed. Welcome to Khartungla, the world's highest motorable pass and one of the most beautiful pit stops on our damn cold journey. Can it get colder than this? Yes, it can. Q. Snow. Q. Sarat struggling to walk in the snow. Q. Q. Dog in the snow. Q. Asses in the snow. Say hello to your dad's favorite desktop wallpaper, Pengong Lake. If we're lucky, we may even get Sarat to take a dip in the freezing Pengong. Come on, Sarat, do it. No way, no way. It's damn cold! Well, there you have it. Sarat conquered Ladakh. He had a trip that was truly unforgettable. He saw spectacular sights, breathtaking beauty, and nature at its majestic best that left him refreshed like never before. I want to thank Fosters for taking me on this damn cold journey to the coldest places in India. Thanks for watching. Share this video and subscribe to our channel and we may just take you on our next trip. Yeah, so the reason I showed you this case study is today basically just to extrapolate how um, you're fundamentally clear with how brands do lead generation campaigns in order to populate their databases so they can send mailers to clients, etc. And Fosters had built a microsite to build to do lead generation, basically to collect data to send mailers about offers that they were running at bars, etc., so on and so forth. And what they eventually did with that microsite is they managed to collect leads to the extent where they ran a contest on the microsite. One guy won the contest, and Fosters' tagline is "It's damn cold." And the guy actually, the guy from Chennai who you saw on the screen won the contest and they actually sent him to Ladakh in order to find the coldest place which was basically that tagline saying it's damn cold which was then captured through a film that you saw so the insight being that one small microsite that was intended to capture leads eventually became a contest contest became a, a trip to Ladakh became a film got 3 million views on that film and the equity of the brand went from here to here in a matter of three weeks so well, we've spoken about video consumption and video consum the opportunities to create uh, avenues for video consumption, which brings us to streaming. And you notice today that India is still a streaming dark market by virtue of the fact that we don't have good internet connectivity for live streaming. <clears throat> but there are products today that exist in the environment like Meerkat and like Periscope that allow you to generate experiences where your consumers can consume these experiences virtually, remotely, by sitting anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country. And if, you're, if, if, you're, uh, if your clients are doing anything interesting across the board, across the country, your, their potential customers and clients have the opportunity to experience these experiences across the board. <clears throat> I'm now going to jump to my third section, which talks about strategies for success of your business. I'm just going to do a quick recap if we, before we get into section three. Section 1 spoke briefly about the current state of digital in India. We spoke about how digital is less than a billion dollars in terms of its size. We spoke about how India as an advertising market is about a 57,000 
crore rupee industry versus Oman that is ye big and is about 60,000 crores. We spoke about mediums and platforms with Facebook leading the race at 125 million users, Twitter coming in at 18 million, LinkedIn coming in at about 31 million give or take. We then went on to identify a few key trends and we spoke about how empathy mapping becomes the most important thing to do to understand user sentiment and user journey and to understand why users come. We spoke about product bifurcation in terms of what you try and do. We spoke about the importance of video in terms of serving content to make experiences more engaging for your users. We spoke about virtual reality very briefly as well. <clears throat> what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take a step back from looking at product and start looking at business. Seeing that you guys are all now trying to build good products, which is great. But at the end of the year, you would have built 100 products, you would have built 100 websites, you would have hired 40 guys, lost 30 guys, looked at a PNL and bled a lot of money, looked at a PNL and made a lot of money on some clients, tried to diversify your focus on, on new services, saying, can I upsell? Can I upsell maintenance? Can I upsell search? Can I upsell social? And eventually, it is these strategies that you put together that make your businesses successful. So I'm going to take a step back from trends and product and industry and look at your businesses and give you a few, few key insights for strategies for success for your businesses. So the first strategy that a lot of Indians are very apprehensive to do is finding the right partner <clears throat> or finding a partner at all. Very often we notice that India is a land of, India has always been a land of entrepreneurs. This startup boom has come now and gone popularized by the press, saying startups, so many billion dollars coming in every year, this one raised 500 million, etc. Doesn't make a difference. India has been doing this since years. Look at the largest business families in India. The Tatas, the Birlas, the Godrejes, the Goenka. These are all entrepreneurial families. They've all built businesses from ground up and from scratch. The only difference is that there was no VC and PE money that time. There was money from banks. But the model was exactly the same. But today the mantra has changed. Today we're saying that you can break out of the bounds of doing what your family did and you can do something new on your own. While doing that, there's absolutely no ego bashing to look for help while doing it. The best decision that I made was not starting up alone. I started out with partners who had the right expertise to complement my skill set and therefore scale a business faster and more efficiently than I could have done alone. <clears throat> Finding eager le le uh, learners. I think Felix and I both spoke about this in terms of hiring the right team when we spoke about talent. And as Sridhar rightly summarized, this is a subject that I am very individually passionate about as well. And the most important thing to do in our industry is since our industry is not a developed industry, is find people who are eager to learn. And while, you ma while we're able to find people who are eager to learn, it's equally important for us to be eager to teach them. Because if we're not eager to teach them, the fact that they have high skill or high potential or high growth curves is worth nothing to you. And eventually, at the end of the year, you guys are going to go back at the end of the quarter, at the end of the month, you guys are going to go back and look at your PNL, look at your own ROI, saying how did this guy make only X many products versus that guy contribute to making Y many products? Why am I paying one developer more than I'm paying the other developer? Why am I paying one designer more than the other designer? Why is one designer spending four hours a day on the internet referencing but still getting his design so right because of those references as opposed to someone who's slogging for 16 hours a day in front of his workspace? Uh, building interface design, building experience design, but getting nothing out of it. <clears throat> Make the organization flat. So I'm guessing a lot of the startups and the organizations that you guys run and work in are smaller organizations where we like keeping transparency and open doors of communication, open channels of communication between the team. And it's important for team members to be invested in, um, Felix spoke about the business goals and the business objectives of your client. In terms of doing that, while of course there are reporting lines that we maintain, it's very important to keep organizations lean and flat when you guys start off with. <clears throat> Build something like this. Challenging conventional, <coughs> conventional agencies and their structural norms. So very often you realize when you look at large technology companies in India, and India after all is the home for large technology companies. You have technology companies in India that have taken India on the global map. The guys like Infosys and the Premjis of the world are actually spending their marketing dollars today not popularizing their uh, organizations alone, but they're popularizing tech in India. And that is, what, that is what has put India on the global map as far as technology is concerned. That is why the highest... Um, 
the highest population of, of technology in the US, for example, is Indian as well. And it's important for us to understand how we can break those larger norms of people who try setting standards for us by doing things in our own creative ways. <clears throat> Find your focus. So I think one thing that a lot of people who start out in life do is they get very confused. Saying that, hey, I have the capability to make a website. I can make the website in PHP. I can make it in .NET. I have the capability to make an app. I can make apps for. Uh, I can make apps on Android. I can ma make apps on iOS. I have the capability to manage my clients' email solutions because I'm doing hosting as well. So I may as well run an emailer campaign for them. And very often we lose focus on what our core business competency is, what our core focus is, and our core focus is a what we are best at doing, and b what makes us the best amount of money. And by the temptation of taking on new work and new projects and trying to be relevantly cool to the industry, we end up losing focus. I think the most important lesson over a period of time and over you look at quarters and quarters and quarters of your PLs is that the most important thing to do is to stay focused at what you identify your focus to be. <clears throat> I think we spoke about this very, very, uh, <coughs> very healthily in, 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 in our previous session. Invest in foreplay, educate your clients. India is a country where people don't understand digital. They do not understand product. Someone on the back said ki badi badi corporates leke, uh, corporate clients like bet jate. The corporate clients don't understand digital at all either. The digital ecosystem comprises of people like us today. We are the digital ecosystem in India. No matter whether someone sits in a corporate, whether someone sits in a startup, they don't understand digital. The people who understand digital are sitting in this room and it is our job to educate our clients as to why it's important that they should be doing something. <clears throat> At some point of time in life, there will always be some kind of dip, some kind of failure. There will always be clients who are unhappy with you, clients who do not pay you, clients who, who tank products after you spent months building them. I think the most important thing to do is to recognize that failure. It's a, ve it's a very common Indian trait for people to stick, take a step back and say, boss, I didn't make it and resume uh, and move, move forward in life. Um, <clears throat> very, very rarely do you find uh, a lot of key entrepreneurs take a step back saying, these are the mistakes that I made. How can I learn for these mistakes? The most important thing to do post failure is something that we do call post evaluation. And when you build a product, you build a website, whether it's successful, whether it's not successful, whether the client makes money, the client doesn't make money. If we don't take that homework back home and do a post evaluation, study the client's analytics month on month on month to understand what you have done wrong, to understand how you can better it, if not with the same client, maybe with the next client, how you can better it and therefore add more value, therefore be more relevant to your clients, therefore be more relevant to the industry, your game hasn't even started. <clears throat> be patient, you may not be the first client to win a pitch. Everyone spoke about how they've lost 100 clients because of this reason or because of that reason and some competition comes in and the competition will overtake them or some product has failed etc. And it's very easy for us to always blame circumstance for us losing a client or not winning a client. I think the most important thing that we all realize by sitting in this room is that patience is the only thing that keeps you going. If we say that our expectation in Q1 is to build X or to build Y worth of business and you don't do it, that doesn't mean that you won't achieve your targets in Q2, Q3 and Q4. If you have performance oriented KPIs for your employees who do not meet them in Q1, does not mean that they will not meet them in Q2, Q3 and Q4. As far as working in an unevolved space is concerned, where your employees' expectations are not the same as yours, where your clients' expectations are not, not the same as yours, the only thing that keeps you as motivated people going is patience. <clears throat> Take chances. So <clears throat> while it's very important for us to find our focus in terms of what we're good at, what we love doing and what makes us money, it's not wrong to take chances. I'm going to give you guys one key example of what take chances could potentially mean in your various different businesses. When we hire people, we hire people with specific skill sets. So I am looking for a senior front-end developer. I am looking for a senior UI, UI, UI and UX designer. And very often, 
it's hard to find these profiles that aren't skillful enough people the guys that are there are too expensive because they worked in large internet companies uh, the guys that are, uh, are too junior have absolutely no experience and need hand holding and very often you'll come by that one portfolio of that one guy who says that i am a ux designer as well as a front end developer and you say hey what do i do with this guy he is useless to me i'm looking for a ux designer and i'm looking for a front end developers two separate profiles because there's two separate scopes of work two separate job descriptions but it's not a bad idea to take a chance on that guy the generation of people born between 1985 and 2000 are called the gen y millennials and the gen y millennials comprises of people who love multifaceting their skill set they love learning more things than they need to know and these people love opportunities like your to actually display their skill set and grow and therefore it's not a bad idea to take chances every now and then you come across someone who confuses you <coughs> the next strategy for success is budget your costs we live in an environment today when digital as an industry is run by balance sheets and not by pnl accounts and everyone's chasing this fictitious concept called value saying it's okay if i bleed it's okay if my pnl is showing negative i will eventually build value and that value will amount to 1 billion dollars like how flipkart did and sell to someone i will go to some vc and manage to liquidate 20% of my company for a series a round of 4 million dollars and we are all chasing value but unfortunately while we are all chasing value we forget that india is a is a country that's run by pnl businesses we have never been a country that's run by balance sheet businesses and it's very important for us to budget your costs if you are a balance sheet business you've got to keep visibility on the larger picture in terms of how you are burning through money and that money needs to result in money because if you don't see more money at the end of the money that you burnt your business is going to shut down faster than you started it diversified specialties focus on holistic growth so we spoke about finding your focus and the one key thing that you're best at that makes you money but eventually you'll reach a point when you realize that you plateau eventually you'll realize that i've reached i've managed to create a team of 30 guys that can do this and they do it really well but i can't build that team further it's not sustainable it's not scalable it's not making me more money i can't manage a team larger than that so that's when you start diversifying that's when you say hey i've managed to get the website piece really right but i genuinely believe there's an opportunity for me to upsell and cross sell at least 20% of revenue if i manage to bundle my email offering if i manage to bundle my search offering if i man manage to bundle my maintenance offering if i manage to bundle my analytics offering and believe it or not today clients want this they treat this as part of their education and they're willing to actually pay to get educated so if we can bundle if we can cross sell and upsell why doesn't that give us the opportunity to diversify our specialties and therefore not become tech shops or website shops but actually digital experts in a growing digital ecosystem <clears throat> learn the importance of client satisfaction understanding numbers hr investing in technology i think we've all spoken about a lot of these pointers in our morning session but india is a country that's prided for its client satisfaction hospitality is something that we just know as clients and i briefly touched upon soft skill management where people learn how to make presentations how to communicate how to write emails to clients how to reply to emails in a timely fashion not to miss phone calls because you've missed a deadline that's what pisses clients off that's when clients say i am not satisfied with your service it's not because your code isn't clean but it's because you're not there at the other end of the phone for them understanding numbers is very very important for you to take a step back and look at and evaluate a product that you've built understand whether the product is actually serving a business solution for your client or not and justify it with data justify it with numbers we don't live in a world where subjectivity can prove anything we live in a world where if you open a ga dashboard you can prove everything to a client human resource management we and we spoke about this extensively in the morning i won't touch upon this again and investing in technology investing in technology could be physical technology it could be soft technology that you actually bring trainers in to teach you someone at the back spoke in the, spoke about in the morning how they would like marketing support from resellers club in order to sell their technology and like how you as a, a sorry their product and like how you as a business owner need marketing support to sell product your teams need tech support to enhance their skill 
where does your team enhance its skill from if not from programs that you can design and develop and very often it's the easiest thing for business owners like us to write off a training cost saying oh, what do I need to train my teams for they're writing clean code they're making good product but if we don't treat them if we don't train them they don't improve their skill set if they don't improve their skill set their code doesn't either get better or lighter or faster and therefore I don't have the ability to charge my client 150 bucks for what I charged him 100 bucks yesterday <clears throat> and finally if, when you get these strategies to success right you score <clears throat> so just a, a quick two minute segment on what the prospects for growth in this digital industry are it's a fast growing industry the industry grows at about in India the industry grows at about 38 to 40 percent per annum which is a phenomenal number we're already a billion dollar industry and we're projected to hit the 33 percent mark on the pie in the next 10 years <clears throat> so like I said 38 percent expected to grow by 40 to 50 percent annually there's a lot of capitalization happen. Something that I expected you guys to talk about in the morning when someone, when Sridhar asked you, where do you see your business in the next three years? The one trend that has dominated our, 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 our environment and our market in India over the last five years is consolidation. You notice a lot of the big giants are consolidating smaller, smaller players who have specialized functions, who have built specialized products, and they want to consolidate these guys to create larger teams, larger conglomerations. And that's where, that's for the guys who are searching for value who are looking for value consolidation has become a large chunk of what we're trying to do horizontal growth opportunity India has always been at the behest and the forefront of being a primary tech player a primary tech country in the world and today India is already sitting at the center of South Asian markets believe it or not more 95% of all digital and creative and tech spends off uh, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, even branching down to Cambodia and Vietnam are now managed in India. <clears throat> Global collaboration opportunities, a lot of large companies coming into, the, uh, coming into our country, setting up base, providing opportunity, providing jobs. Please treat this not as competition. Please treat this as market creation. Let them create markets for us. Let them set up the goalposts. When they set up the goalposts and they create the demand, we are already sitting to supply. And to end with a quote from Sir Martin Sorrell, who controls WPP, which is the largest advertising conglomerate in the world. He says that currently digital is about 20% worldwide of, in terms of revenue, in terms of spends and size. And money will move from print to digital, money will move from television to digital, and eventually we will consolidate at about 30% at maturity globally. India is at 7 to 10%, just to show you the diaspora and the increment and room for growth and he says that by the year 2025 50 percent of all his revenues and he's the large he owns the largest conglomerate in the world 50 percent of his revenues will come a from digital and b from developing countries which is brazil russia india and china all right thank you guys with that my session comes to an end hope you enjoyed it